I submit this is a witness affidavit to the people of justice worldwide and particularly the citizens in the United States of America. Hillary has already, in orchestration with that aged and dementia-ridden Pelosi, long before the 2020 election was held on the date of the 3rd of November, demonstrated the whole conspiracy in the face of the whole world. Point 1. Only the honest party will come up with real lawsuits related to election fraud. Election fraud, particularly when it comes to the presidential election, which involves not only more than 140 million registered voters but also a huge number of staffs, public or hired, under a huge number of supervisors, who supposedly operate thing in a neutral position under the guidelines and regulations of each state and without compromising the constitution, and post office system, and even a bunch of contractors' companies and their employees, would never be an ordinary, far from easy, legal cases by any standard. Also, who can overlook the digital online voting system called Dominion, designed to rig all types of election voting, was in fact adopted by more than 30 states for this presidential election. This dubious system, originally developed by Venezuela to guarantee the tyrannical Chavez to stay in office permanently, was introduced in the late 1990s and has been widely criticized for facilitating voting fraud since. Yet apparently, corruption and administrative missteps or indifference had caved into this Dominion voting system to exercise its malicious nature of inducing easy technical glitch and intentional hacking, hence enabling massive scale fraudulent actions to rig, or simply, rob the outcome of the election. And this logical anticipation of election fraud nightmare has materialized on a catastrophic scale in this 2020 presidential election, even thankfully most of the criminal evidence seems to have been secured for ultimate retribution. Point two. The cheating party would never bring legal action when they cheated yet still lost. Only the cheating party will accuse the other party of stealing the election yet stay inactive without taking any concrete legal action. Why? Simple. One are lost, they have been cheating for so long, this current one, and many or every earlier ones, that they never want to wash the dirty nylon with any court action. Smart, pretending to be very generous while hoarding all the skeletons in the closet forever. Point three. The unmistakable twists in Hillary's words and attitude testifies the Democrats' plot to rob the 2020 election equals Democrats are constantly cheating. Hillary's timely concession in 2016 and her 2020 accusation of Trump stole the election testified the above and further testifies that Democrat had got ready to rob the election no matter what. Back in 2016, you saw Hillary bow out three days after the election and tally count, it proved two things. One. Not only there was simply no evidence at the hand of the cheating party against Trump. 2. More than that, that was the only way the cheating party could get away with their multiple acts of crime by posting a facade of respect to democracy with graceful images, in the desperate hope that even when they lost, people, including their grudging supporters disillusioned with the misleading pre-election winning poll and the losing result. Why? Hillary was obliged to bring a series of election lawsuits to preserve the integrity of America since Trump was never scientifically projected to be possibly elected. That purse was enough to raise and induce a huge number of informers and witnesses to testify against Trump. But nobody raises any election fraud issues on Trump. How could she have ever accepted a defeat in an election that was guaranteed of her landslide victory by countless national polls months before the election? That sort of outcome would naturally fuel much suspicion on election fraud and vote riggings on Trump's side. It was for Hillary to decide to demurely and gracefully forgive her husband's permanent sacrilege with Lewinsky hardcore affair in the White House. But any suspicion or accusation ensuing an election debacle is not at the disposal of the candidate unless based in the above rationals. Hillary's contradictory acts and words were all calculated under one simple rule. Leave the crime scene quick when she fails, and attack without remorse when she could. Factor 4. Counter-effective Trump bashing and rife nationwide corruption had unfoiled the Democrats' plot to rob the White House with election coup d'etat in the USA. 1. Four years of Trump bashing made Trump stronger than ever. There is simply no need to exaggerate how the Democrats and their league of evils and been grilling President Trump during the last years. And while the futile and vexing investigation of the Russia Gate and failed impeachment attempt both ended up counter-effective and even turned out to strengthen the integrity of Trump. 2. Democrats' acts and plots of treason accelerated in the face of the Chosan Trump. In the face of an unstoppable Trump, extreme treason level of election fraud coup d'etat was corroborated and implemented in the 2020 presidential election, yet the ubiquitous acts of crime are surfacing and the skeletons all crumbling out of the closets. To beat out Trump and the foundation of the USA once and for all, the Democrat Party masterminds became more determined to implement their long-meditated plot since the 2016 presidential election debacle and earlier, to get the White House by hook or by crook. 
Democrats and its peers' constant grilling on Trump has ironically formed an invincible and more popular Trump, and that requires extra force to attempt to topple Trump. Even by using the pandemic casualty to attack President Trump, by the middle of 2020, it became clear that everything but still the voters is standing and operating in the favor of the Democrats. Evil efforts were tuned up in an all-out mode, with an unseen level of brutality and savageness, obviously aiming to topple not only President Trump, but the whole being of the United States of America. Legions of fake media churning out fake polls, heinously vilifying Trump daily, tyrannical social media governing the communication market, censoring and blocking at their will, at accelerated pace and intensity. Propaganda media, social network, big techs, and Wall Street blue chips intensified their corroboration. Black Lives Matter led rioting and looting went viral nationwide under the open encouragement of the Democrat politicians. Left radicals broke loose into outlaw criminals specialized in beheading or toppling historic statues and sabotaging national monuments, in brutal and most cynical attempt to tear down the common value of the American people. White House has been besieged more than once by swarms of mobs of Antifa and the likes ranting and wilding clubs mindless of masks yet fanned escorted by the Democrats that President Trump needs to seek shelter under the White House. All these went rampant during the heat of the pandemic while the Democrats are ordering for general lockdown and stringent yet counter-effective policy resulting, mostly purposefully, in more fatality and financial loss. So the Democrats gleefully present the pandemic death toll to campaign against President Trump while carrying on to accustom Americans to a suffocating socialistic way of living most resembling in the communist world. In the disguise of the extension of pandemic precautions, early mailing voting is promoted and enacted at an ever more pervasive scale that was anticipated and proved to be inviting easy rigging and forging of votes ready to defeat the incumbent, since Trump had been reiterated on the problems of mailing vote and denouncing such stool of election fraud. Regretfully all these election frauds warned by President Trump came to light days after the election when sacks of relatively less portion of mailing votes dedicated to Trump were found in the trash tank or scattered in the junkyard, totally untabulated and certainly untallied. On the other hand, Democrat candidates' votes get to be shipped in tens of thousands to the tallying office at 4 a.m., four hours after President Trump had confirmed that he won the election with sufficient electoral numbers at the midnight of the election day. With diligent legal actions, these late coming, and most likely forged votes, were partially excluded from the tally of the Democrat candidate. Yet widespread of election fraud in all forms were reported by more than 12,000 citizens and more than 400 affidavits were made to testify rampant acts of cheating and administrative irregularities, including keeping tally observer from watching the tallying and counting and recording process by blocking them from the venue or keeping them at around 40 feet away. Democrats ace under the sleeve equals hack happy dominion. Should all the existing legions of evil factors work out the Democrats' way, the plot would never fail. Yet the stake is too much for the Democrat to take any chance. Even flanked with all these tricks and frauds during the campaign and amidst the election, they decided they still need an ace under their sleeve to secure the White House once and for all. And there came the Dominion Online voting system. As nearly a hundred servers suspected to hack and rain the Dominion Online voting and tallying system were seized by the U.S. Navy from an office in Frankfurt, Germany. One of the major incidents convincingly linked to the rigging fact of this Dominion system was that at around 4 p.m., the system, nationwide among those 30 states using such system, was shut down for more than 20 minutes before return to operation, yet it became highly suspected that through cross-border remote hacking, decisive alteration of the vote count was activated, which had thoroughly obstructed the actual count of the electoral votes, constituting a felony with a vehement violation of the Constitution intended for untempered, fair and free election to demonstrate the actual will of the U.S. voting citizens. This outrageous systemic regression has also amounted to an irredeemable act of crime in an attempt to deprive President Trump's real gain of votes, which, according to the current extrapolation, would give Trump a landslide victory for his re-election. In a world that all pre-election polls are false, any attempt to temper the result of an actual election naturally constitute an irredeemable felony deserving the severest penalty and sanctions. Also, since this heinous conspiracy goes beyond the border of the USA, with conspicuous and surreptitious aids both in cash and tech provided by foreign countries, funneled in and spread across the institutions and voting, tallying, mailing, to rig the outcome of the election, acts of treason became more than obvious, among other federal criminal felony and flagrant acts of violation on the Constitution of the USA which would more than likely to render the Democrats' candidates disqualified and their votes and tallies revoked. Yet, as they became ever more audacious and criminally ambitious, they inevitably grew reckless. 
It has also been proved that the total tally voted for the Democrat candidate, with mailing vote accounting for the majority, outnumbered the total registered voters when added up with the vote President Trump had won. Apparently, the Dominion system or the ones who were operating it were a little too flattering with that preposterous winning margin that became concrete evidence of forging dead vote and double voting, among other rigging tricks. How to untie the bell collared on the neck of that greedy cat? What does it mean to be stewed in one's own soup? For now, though the legal and criminal allegation would take weeks to reach a primary conclusion determining the effects and liability of the cheating party. It has already been displayed to the people in the USA and worldwide that con men almost always know how to play safe, but as vicious as they could be, they easily fall prey to the loss of their mind when they try to con too much, particularly after they have sold their soul to the devil. End of the report.